spicy pumpkin cake. This is an adaptation of a really, really good carrot cake recipe that I have with a cream cheese icing. So perfect for Halloween or any time of year when you want something decadent and sweet with a little bit something extra. So for the spice, we have ground cinnamon, ground mixed spice, good vanilla extract, our dried fruit, sultanas or raisins, dried cranberries, one of my favorites, also known as craisins, which are going to be soaked in orange juice to revive them, make them nice and plump and juicy. The pumpkin, this is how the pumpkin comes in. We have 300 grams of grated pumpkin, or you can do what I did and just blitz it through the food processor to make sure you don't over blitz it to a pulp. There must be a little bit of bite still in it. And for the cake batter itself, flour, sugar, and eggs. So the first thing we're going to do is to revive our fruit. So 100 grams of our sultanas and raisins, 100 grams of cranberries going in. Now we want to add our orange juice. This is especially good if your fruit is looking a little bit tired and a little bit worn. It's a great tip for making it plump and juicy and full of flavour. Now if the fruit is particularly dried, what you can actually do is cover it in cling film and pop it in the microwave for a minute or so, because the heat will actually help regenerate the dried fruit. And in we go. So just leave that to the side while we carry on mixing. So the first stage of our cake mix, like any cake recipe that you follow, will be to cream together our butter and our sugar. So in my electric mixer, I already have um, 200 grams of butter that I've left out to soften. And to this, we're going to add our light golden brown sugar. And we're going to whip them together until it's light and fluffy and creamy. So this is going to take a few minutes, so just be patient. Flying butter and sugar. So once the mixture is well mixed and you'll actually see a changing texture, it's going to become really fluffy. We're going to add one egg at a time and mix it. runny at this point. Scrape down the sides of your mixing bowl. Another quick little blitz. Okay. That's looking great. Now your mixture should be quite smooth, it shouldn't look curdled um, and you'll have a nice light fluffy cake mixture by doing it this way. So in here I have got self-raising flour with an extra teaspoon of bread soda just to give an extra bit of oomph. But make sure that you don't over measure the bread soda because you'll end up with a pumpkin cake that's very bitter tasting and it'll go a very dark colour which is not what we want for this recipe. So in goes the flour. So to prevent a haze of flour everywhere. So now don't waste any of your cake mixture. Tap your whisk against the bowl to get it all off. Okay. And now you just require a bit of elbow grease to get the rest done. So in goes the grated or chopped up pumpkin. We have our dried fruit that's been reconstituted in our orange juice. Spices. You can also add your spices at the beginning when you do the creaming of the butter and the sugar. A teaspoon of good vanilla extract. I'm just going to guesstimate it. And as I said, a bit of elbow grease. Okay, so now we're going to get our mixture into our cake tin. I have a lovely silicone cake tin here 
difference is this one has got a wire frame, so it's much easier to get cakes in and out of. So scrape off your spoon. This will take quite a while to bake because there's a lot of moisture in the pumpkin. And it's quite a dense cake with all the dried fruit and the pumpkin. But well worth it. You'll end up with a gorgeous, spicy, moist, aromatic cake. Great, that's everything. Spread it out. So bake it at 180 for the first half an hour so it forms a good crust. And you'll probably notice as we're going quite brown on the top. So just cover it with foil, or what I do is just a baking tray, and then reduce the heat down and bake it for a further 45 minutes approximately until when you insert a skewer or a dinner knife, it comes out clean. Because you don't want to dry the cake out either, but it needs a little bit of TLC to finish baking. So I'm going to pop this in the oven. So I'm expecting to spend about an hour and a half waiting for it. Now your cake needs to cool completely before you try and ice it. There's the cream cheese icing, so everything will just melt and go all over your cake if you try to do it when it's too warm. So I actually made a cake yesterday, just to be absolutely certain that it was cooled down, but at least two hours on a wire rack to cool down. So here's my cream cheese icing that I've mixed up um, in my electric beater. So it's cream cheese, icing, sugar, bit of butter. I can also add some orange juice to it just to continue our orange theme. Oh, absolutely delicious. You might not want quite as much icing, but I am an icing fan. Cake, of course, you can choose a round or a square shape, doesn't make any difference, but it is a large cake. So you are definitely looking at a larger volume. You don't need any special piping bags or anything like this. You want to make it look slightly rough. It's not too perfect. So just lift up your spatula. Gorgeous. Now this cake you will have to store in the fridge once you've finished icing it because it is cream cheese. So some goodies to decorate it with. I've got orange zest here and also I've got some wonderful walnuts. So walnuts and pecanuts are the nuts that work extremely well with a carrot cake, which this is a version of really, just using pumpkin. So we've got our little zesting tool. Grip firmly underneath the orange with your thumb and then just drag your little zester across it. And it's a really simple, effective way of decorating your spicy pumpkin cake and also adding an extra citrus note to it. Lemon and orange go particularly well with carrot and spicy pumpkin cake like this. I'm actually going to take another one. That was a fairly small orange, so I think we need a little bit extra. Garnishes should always be edible and relevant. So obviously zest is edible, but it's also relevant because we have orange juice that our fruit soaked in, and you can also put orange juice into your icing. So just scatter across your walnuts. I don't think anyone will be able to resist this cake. So I hope this becomes a firm family favorite. My very special spicy pumpkin cake.